Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is how to see lean waste. How to spot lean waste and therefore how to see opportunities to improve in your particular business. So let's put the title up. How to see lean waste. Um, not necessarily the seven wastes individually but how to just quickly quantify how much waste and therefore how much opportunity you have inside your business. Um, you often have business measures, things like you're measuring productivity or efficiency and they often look really good. Well, got a really good productivity measure. You might be measuring overall equipment effectiveness and that might be nice and high as well. Yeah, let's be optimistic, 81%. Then you get business consultants who come along, lean guys, people like myself, who come along and say, by the way, 99% of what you do is waste. You think, you know, I can't see it. I don't know where it is. Um, I can't find it. We're, we're much better than that. These people must be idiots. They must be working in terrible factories. No, no, 99% of what everybody does is waste. So what I want to do, I want to give you two very simple exercises to tune you in to the seven lean wastes, or to tune you into just waste generally. Um, so you won't see these specifically, but let's put the seven wastes up. Um, you won't be able to see them specifically in these exercises, but the exercises literally take five to ten minutes to do. So let's just write the seven wastes up. Um, just to remind ourselves and also we will remind ourselves what they actually mean for a second so let's just get ourselves tuned in overproduction and finally defects okay so there are the seven ways so I'm going to give you two, I'm going to give you two very quick exercises so that you can you can see opportunity you can see how much waste you've got and therefore People like me aren't talking nonsense. What are these seven wastes about? What these seven wastes do is they talk about the flow of the product. Okay, so your product is flowing through the factory. It's moving down a timeline. You've got flow. It's measured in time. Anything that gets in the way of transforming the product is waste. Okay, so this is about the product. It's not about your people. It's not about your efficiency. It's about the product moving through, the orders that are moving through. So let me show you two simple exercises to see how much waste you've got inside your factory. You can do this very, very quickly. So the first time I ever did this, I was working for this company. Uh, this is a Rexel stapler. And what we did was we sat down and we said, how much time is involved in actually making this? Making this one. So we're talking about making one. We're going to behave like a customer. We're literally going to knock on the door and say, I'd like to buy a stapler, please. Okay. How much time does it take to make this one? So it's pressing. Most of it's plated. Although sometimes we painted some of these. So it's pressing. It's metal finishing. It's assembly and it's packing, and that's it. Okay, how much how much business time is in that? Basically, in that stapler, there was just. You can do this for your product. There was just ten minutes worth of work in making one of those. That's all there was. How much time did the product spend? How much time did the steel? So when a piece of steel arrived, if I put a sticker on it and I followed the sticker all the way through, how long would it take to get out of the building? Well, it would take one month to get out of the building. Okay, so one month compared to 10 minutes. I think one month is something like 9,600 minutes, I could be wrong, so if we just keep it in minutes to minutes. This is the value, this is the bit that the customer's interested in. They're only interested in transformation time. 
the rest of the time the item was sitting around, it was waiting, it was in inventory, it was being transported, etc. It was defects, it was stuff we didn't want. These are the seven wastes that measure flow time, that's what it's about. Well look, if I divide that into that, I've got 99% of it is waste. There you go. It's very easy to work out, isn't it? It took me two minutes. You can do that for your product. That's method number one. Method number two is this. Go and get yourself a floor plan, a layout, yeah? Now I sometimes bump into these in my clients as we're walking around often the fire evacuation procedures. I've got a floor plan to show you how to get out of the building and things like that. So I'll quickly have a look at the floor plan and I'll do this. What I want you to do, you'll have the floor plan, maybe we'll have Goods in Woods Warehouse. Let's go over this side. We've got the Dispatch Warehouse. And then if we think about the stapler that I've just uh, looked at, maybe we've got uh, the Press Shop. Maybe we're going to do some plating. Maybe there's some stores. In between those two, maybe on the side of the press shop. This is the tool room. Keep the press tools in good shape. Maybe there's some office space. The HR department needs some desks. So do the finance department. Wonderful people. Um, what else might we have? And then what we might have look is some production lines. Um, so this is the assembly area, etc. Okay, so you'll have a floor plan. And all I need to do is this. I just want you to look at it and just quickly, it doesn't have to be calculated, just quickly, rough, rough idea. How much of the floor plan, how much floor space equals money? How much of the floor space transforms the product and adds value so that you can sell it to the customer? And how much of the floor space is about this nonsense? Warehouses, big gangways for forklift trucks to travel down, etc. Because all of that, customers aren't interested in. They're interested in the bit that makes money, the transformation. And I would like to bet, when I've done this in the past, usually, I find about 20% makes money. There you go. Now they're two very quick measures so that you can get tuned in to the possibilities. Okay, and that's what this is about. I recently saw a video um, from a gentleman by the name of Paul Akers. Go look this gentleman up. Look at his YouTube channel. And Paul was asked, how do you keep finding opportunities to improve? It's because Paul can look at his business like this and he can quickly see the waste. Yeah, so... I want to get you to tune in to the possibilities. There's going to be lots of improvement. Toyota have been trying to get rid of this waste for 70 years. What have they achieved? Let's think about this for a second. Toyota, some of their assembly plants, they say are 50-50. So 50% is waste, 50% is value, okay? What does that mean? Well, it's the most fantastic thing, 50-50. Because if it takes two hours to assemble a car and there's another two hours of waste, it means that the material is inside the factory for only four hours. Think about that. Wheels are delivered in the morning, four hours later, that up the road on a car. It's incredible. And that's 50-50. Nowhere near these numbers. We tend to think it's rubbish, but when you're looking at lean, lean just looks at your, your system in a much deeper, more critical way. And if you look at it right, 99% of what you do is waste. And if you just learn to look at your systems in the right way, you can see the waste and you'll be doing continuous improvement for the next 100 years 
And if you look at it in the right way, get rid of the right waste and set your factory up in the right way, you'll make more money than you've ever made. Lean waste, that is how to find it.